Hey, I'm here with Paul Mickley from Navionics. And Paul, you know, nowadays, uh, there's so much better mapping than there was back when I was starting out in the fishing industry. I've got boxes and boxes in my garage of paper charts. Most of them were made before you and I were even on this earth, weren't they? Very true. I mean, that's the days where people used literally a rock and string to drop down and find depth as they bumped along. And you know, those rock and strings aren't always that accurate, especially when the wind's blowing your rowboat or whatever they used back then. But bottom line is that there are so many good ways of uh, seeing what's on a lake by going to Navionics mapping. Like you guys have incredible charts for lakes across Canada, the United States, and all over the world, don't you? Yeah, everywhere around the world. And, and the technology, to your point, has changed. I mean, every day there's something new in a new way for us to allow people to go ahead and help get better data. You know, government charts are, are Eon Zone, embedded charts are, you know, a screenshot of time for whenever they did that map. It could be 30 years ago, but now we've got mapping you can have from tomorrow. Coming up on this week's episode, Paul Mickley from Navionics maps an uncharted lake Bob is familiar fishing using the Navionics mapping app to capture an accurate picture of bottom and to Bob's surprise, the discovery of previously unfished structure that holds a bounty of bass and walleye. Later, Bob and his brother Wayne attend the snow bear migration in Manitoba for some fun fishing landing walleye through the ice on Lake Winnipeg. Wow. Here we go. That is a fish of a lifetime right there. Wow, we that thing is a monster! They fight hard, don't they? Look at that magnificent fish. Look <laughs> at the size of that fish. There it is again. The color is incredible. Oh, there we go. The Real Fishing Show with Bob Izumi. Big old Great Lakes smallmouth. That is a big rainbow trout, Chris. Nice double header. Whoa! <laughs> nice jump. Yeah, all right. That is a monster <laughs> smallmouth. Man, that is so cool. Another one, there we go. The biggest pike I've ever caught. Look at that chunk. So that's what we're talking about. Real fishing is sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water, and Tim Hortons. On the Real Fishing Show, we make catching fish like this a possibility. I wasn't going to say this, but I guess I will. Paul Mickley from Navionics here. He's from Florida, and it's a little cool up here in Canada it's today. It's a lot cool in Canada today. So we're pre-fishing before we even get out there fishing uh, on dry land in the cabin here, looking at a Navionics chart that we made uh, the last couple of days on a lake that was never charted. And this is a good way to actually find out some potential areas of where you may fish, isn't it? It's a lot better than me sitting out there in the rain and the cold, for sure. I like the comfort of this cabin where we can look and take a look and say, all right, what areas do we want to check out? We can use the Navionics app. We can go to the Navionics website, which is our web API. You can look at anywhere you want uh, in the world for charting and actually sit here on the app and we can put our waypoints on here. We can look at lat longs and we can do a lot of pre-fishing here before we ever head out on the water. What you really want to do is look for those high percentage areas, lumps and humps, uh, saddles, points, islands, break lines, all those things that could hold fish. And you know, the neat thing about it is that so much is done nowadays in the comfort of your own home studying a lake on all these great charts that you guys have just before you even hit the water, right? Right. And, and as you know, to get out there, when you're on the water, you want to maximize the most time you have. And to run around a lake and try to say, well, let me try that. Let me try this. Let me try that. Be able to narrow it down ahead of time and, and just make your day that much more planned and really dial in. Is, is just so much more effective. Well, on that note, I think it's time to hit the water. If it's too cold for you, I'll pick you up later, okay? Let's go. Here you go, Bob. Oh, I lost mine. The forecast, Paul said, uh, rain, they weren't lying, because we're getting some rain. You know, weatherman has been wrong before. That never happens. <laughs> Not true. I wish they were wrong today because it actually did say scattered showers. <laughs> well, hey, it is the real fishing show and you can't always get great weather, I guess. No, the lid is up. <laughs> there we go. That's a rock. It's a rock. It's a rock that's jumping. There you go, I heard a little drag. Yeah, all right. 
That's that new Berkeley power tube. They've redone them. Uh, you missed one? Missed one. And we got a real dark day. There what do you go. got? Oh, oh Mr. Small, small little, mode. little blade bait. It's fun. <laughs> Gotta love smallies. Yeah, you got the old Johnson uh, Thin Fisher on there, I believe, huh? Yeah, I like this little bait. Nice. Oh, baby. Nice smallie. All, right. All right, sweet. Paul, you know, I just got up here to Bark Lake and the Halliburtons, but I understand you've been here with John White, my son Darren, doing some videotaping. What have you guys been doing up here in the Halliburtons? Yeah. We wanted to use the new sonar charts live and actually map the lake for you. Right. So I know you've got some special spots that you've always fished, but we said, let's go out, let's map the lake, let's find out what's really on the bottom. So this is one of the humps we found out here to fish. Amazing technology, and we're going to talk more about it. Like this hump, for instance, you know, we didn't even know it existed. And here we are, we just stopped here a few minutes ago, and bang, we're catching smallmouth. Now we have a lake that never has been mapped before. I mean, this didn't even show up before, this lake, on any chip or any mapping except a road map. So now we've got a complete hydrographic chart, basically, of the whole lake, don't we? Yeah. All right. Using the Navionics app to map a lake when we return, stay tuned. charting as we're boating and fishing. Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View, sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. When it comes to fishing docks, the most important consideration is a high level of respect for the people that own these incredible hotspots. Though cottagers technically do not own the lake, they do lay claim to the structures, watercraft, and other features in front of their property. Damage any of these, and you're liable for prosecution. This includes chipping a boat or motor. Easy to do on a poor cast with a lead head. An even bigger problem is the chance of leaving hooks behind, which presents a serious hazard to swimmers. This is, in fact, the primary concern of landowners and not the protection of their fish, as one would think. A good rule of thumb before proceeding? If someone's enjoying their dock, move on. If anyone is visible on the property, ask for permission. Stating your intention to release anything unharmed nearly always turns things your way. Non-anglers may even welcome the free show. Before fishing any dock, learn to cast accurately by practicing at home. That way, you'll avoid the wrong type of confrontation while putting yourself into the right kind. If you have any doubts regarding your abilities, move in close and plunk vertically with a longer rod. That's exactly what we do in our own filming. And from a fisheye perspective, it's truly amazing how close you can get to the action. So this morning, we're gonna head out and start mapping on this lake that has no contours on it whatsoever. We're gonna connect the Navionics app to the HDS Gen 3. And you can use Gen 1 and Gen 2, but you gotta get the Go Free unit. So on your Lowrance, you wanna go under your settings. You're gonna scroll down to your wireless. Under your wireless, you see wireless devices. You're gonna click that. And then you see internal wireless. You wanna make sure, obviously, your wireless is turned on. Tap that and you see your network key. Now on your iPad or your mobile device, you are going to turn on your Wi-Fi, and you're gonna locate your HDS or your GoFree, and you're gonna take that network key and enter it in. Once you've connected that, your mobile device is gonna be connected to the GoFree, you open up the Navionics app, and you're ready to go start mapping. So earlier we talked about how to set up your Lowrance HDS to connect to the Navionics app to do sonar charts live. So we've now been out here about 20 minutes and you can see the results that we've already done. This is live charting as we're boating and fishing. Even though there's no lake here, we've been able to create a map with contours and spot soundings showing us the ledges and brand new lumps right here. These lumps, we thought this lake had no contours in the middle. We found these two lumps that we're probably gonna go catch some walleye off of later. But as you go along, this draws live contours. When you finish and you close out the app, those logs go to Navionics seamlessly. We then will take this and draw a coastline of your lake, input those contours. You'll have this sonar charts live on your mobile device. And this all happens as you're boating and fishing 
doesn't matter where you are, you can draw live contours as you boat and fish with Sonar Charts Live and Navionics. A rather large rock down there. Is there anybody that wants to bite on it? Yes, there is. Molly. All right. Right on a hump that you guys marked as well. Yeah. We come to it, we come right to it, and mark a fish right on it, and you drop down that thin fisher and catch him. Come here, fella. Got that hook in his bottom jaw. I don't feel like getting the hook in me with it. Yeah, he, he didn't. He ate that. He ate it he good. Ate that good. Okay. And got a few walleyes, a bunch of little smallmouth, and, and you know, on spots that we've never even fished before because we just didn't know they were there, right? No, it's fun. It's almost like a hunting fishing combo. A exactly. Oh, yes. Hey. A walleye. That is a nice little walleye. And you know what? It's funny because a lot of people don't think of tube jigs for walleyes, but this is a Berkeley power tube and they will eat them. That's, uh, that's a good little eaten size walleye there. All right, good old two bait, smallmouth walleyes. Life is good and uh, the whole key there is just dragging this tube because it's overcast and sort of skimming it along the bottom. Mm, very cool. There we go. When we return, <laughs> walleye through the ice uh, at right, the well, Snow Bear Migration. Stay here. tuned. <laughs> this tip of the week is sponsored by Coleman, the outdoor company. You know one of the things I love about fishing is that you have the opportunity to keep experimenting with new gear, new techniques, and new spots on the water. But one thing I don't want to tinker with is my boat engine's maintenance. That's why I'm so excited about this brand new product from my friends at Mystic Lubricants. It's Mystic JT4 all-in-one two-cycle outboard engine oil. We're talking about a high-performance two-cycle engine oil with a built-in fuel stabilizer, a built-in engine cleaner, and a built-in ethanol treatment, which is nice because if you're like me, you worry about what damage can be done to your outboard over time, and it can be pretty nasty. Well, now you know you're protected. Best of all, Mystic does the work for you, so no more adding 10 ounces of this, 5 ounces of that, and hoping you get it right. For premix, just add all-in-one to your gas and you're good to go. Pretty convenient. For direct injection, add to your engine oil reservoir and enjoy the benefits of an all-in-one engine cleaner, plus it's priced lower than most OEM high-performance oils that don't even include those important additives, and it's guaranteed. Yes, guaranteed to protect your OEM warranty. Hmm, less money on engine maintenance means more money for new gear. Less time on engine maintenance means more time on the water. I'd say that Mystic's JT4 all-in-one two-cycle outboard engine oil is definitely a keeper. Okay, I see Jerry's holding a fish, but his hot blew away. Well, I saw him running like crazy. <laughs> he looks like a kid with a new toy right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you call a happy camper. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, this one does not feel like a jumbo, Wayne, but it does feel like an uh, Oh, he come off! <laughs> Oh, look at you. <laughs> it come, oh, oh, there it is. It's it's stuck in the hole. Oh, oh you can get it. Why don't you get oh, it? Oh, <laughs> He might be coming to the frying uh -oh, pan. Uh oh, he can't. He, he, might, can't, he can't go backwards. He might, he might be coming to the frying pan. I got to figure out Here. how to get that. How about if I give you a scooper? Yeah, yep. Okay, oh, here we go. Okay, I, yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, we do have a good eater here. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, no. <laughs> Tells you what. <laughs> I am keeping. Uh oh, get back up here. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like all you did not have reverse, so this one is going out on the ice. This is a good eating-sized fish here. And uh, what can I say? 
That was like a catch and release and catch again. That's a real pro move there. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely got my money's worth out of this fish. Here we go. You gotta love winter fishing, and here we are on Lake Winnipeg in March, and uh, my brother Wayne and I are in the snow bear. We're having a, a little bit of fun here with the snow bear uh, migration. There's a lot of folks here from Snow Bear Canada, Snow Bear US. You know, it's amazing how popular it is. There are people here from the Dakotas, Minnesota. Uh, you've got people Wisconsin. from- Wisconsin. Yeah, so you got people from all BC. over the US, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. Life is good on Lake Winnipeg. All right, let's Especially get in the snow one. bear. <laughs> all right. Bob, check that out. Very nice. Personal best. Okay. <laughs> this is Jerry Collins with his personal best What'd you walleye. Get on Caught right oh, here on a beautiful day on Lake Winnipeg. Look at and that. He's, nice. Look at that. How big? Mm. Double digit? No? No. Okay, Wayne, Wayne, <laughs> Wayne says about three pounds. <laughs> Let me take a picture, Jerry. Hold on. Very nice. <laughs> More Winnipeg walleye action through the ice when we return. Stay tuned. I cannot believe how much heat this Gladiator Series Coleman stove is kicking out. Hey, what can I say? We're roughing it out here on the ice today, and I guess I'm Camp Cook, and uh, what I'm doing is uh, cooking up some sausages here on the ice, and this uh, Coleman stove here is a fire night stove, and it puts out a lot of BTUs. We're talking about 24,000 BTUs, which is a lot of heat. And uh, it's also got the wind block system here. So there's a bit of a breeze going on, but I'm still got a lot of heat, a lot of flames. And uh, what can I say? It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. While everybody's catching fish behind me, I'm doing the work, sort of. There we go. Gotta love it, I said. Is that a fish? And you can see it right on the lower end. On the bottom too, look at that. See it streaking up. That was pretty cool. Now, I'm not using bait, Wayne. I'm pull this up. Okay, oh, yeah. There we are. Uh -oh. Okay. Nice. Alrighty. Nice fish. Oh, there we go. Good fish. Look at that. And just hook the oh, those barbless <laughs> hooks. You know, you gotta pinch the barbs down here. Manitoba, it's all barbless, and that's the meal flat chat just fell out, just barely skin hook. That's a uh, prime, prime greenback. Super. I'll well, just lower that down. I got one immediately on the fall there. <laughs> on the fall. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What is happening here? I think he's got a decent one on. Yeah, I got this six pound special ice line on here, Bob. The way that rod's loaded, that's yeah. a, what is that, Veritas? Yeah, Veritas, medium action. If it isn't a big fish, he's using a very light rod. So let's see, <laughs> see what happens here. Oh yeah, see some white. Oh, I see, uh, I see a lot of fish down there. <laughs> <laughs> I see a lot of fish. We're running what? Six inch holes here or eight inch? Eight. Eight inch, eight inch holes. Oh, here we go. Looking good. Oh, this is Looking a good one. Good. Looking oh, good. yeah, that's a big one. Okay. This is okay. a big one. Take a look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Look at that size of this hog. Wait. Oh. <laughs> look at that thing. Whoa. <laughs> look at the belly on that thing, eh? Unbelievable. Turn that, look at that. On an belly. ultra light jig, Just too. A little tiny. Eight ounce jig. There we are. Okay. 
Look at the size of that monster. Look at the belly on it, eh? You see that iridescent green? Here, you Can I hold, hold my it. fish? <laughs> Look at that thing. Whoa. <laughs> Look at the belly on that, Bob. Isn't that amazing? That, How wide is that belly? You know, that is just <laughs> such a big walleye. And it's so perfect looking. There's not like any scars or anything. We're talking a nice specimen. Well, you gonna put her back? Yeah, here we go. Oh, it's not gonna fit. You can grab that tail. It won't fit. I believe I can pull that back. That's all. And we're gonna have to take the. Okay, there you go. There you go. Okay. There you go. Come on. There, there she goes. goes. All right. Unbelievable. Good stuff. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, the way that rod was loaded up, you could tell it was a big fish. Well, when and it shakes, uh, you could feel the rod, whoom, whoom, because, you know, so much leverage, a big head. I think we might want to mark this on the Lorance. We're going to GPS this spot because we are fishing today and tomorrow. Let's see what happens here. Let's keep fishing. What do we got here? Is a keeper? Ah, a nice one. Very nice. Lake Winnipeg walleye. Wayne, what do you got to say about that? Oh, I just missed one. I'm just saying. Looks like it's a good eating size. That's what I'm saying. What do you think? I just missed one, too. One just hammered me. That's, that's going on the ice for eating. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, we're, talk, we're talking <laughs> double header here. Perch. What are they doing here? They're not supposed to be here. I've heard there's so many walleyes here, the poor perch can't compete. Oh, well, okay. His is bigger than mine, folks. And, <laughs> Look at uh, how well hooked it is. We're not talking belt. target species here. Lake Winnipeg uh, has it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> this is a big fish. That is a fish of a lifetime. <laughs> well, that is just amazing. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> that was too cool. Oh, man, what a fish. Look at that.